I want to thank Research Consultants International for sponsoring today's podcast. They're a globally renowned lead generation firm that helps economic development organizations create real prospects. They've helped over 500 economic development organizations. Let me tell you exactly what they do. They facilitate one-on-one meetings for economic developers with corporate executives who will have projects soon. They can facilitate these meetings to where you travel to the corporate executive's office and meet them there, or you meet them at a trade show, or even have a conference call so you don't have to pay for travel. They recently launched a service called FDI 365, which provides you a lead a day of fast-growing companies that will be expanding soon. Their research has helped over $5 billion in projects get cited since inception. I encourage you to go to www.researchfdi.com to learn more about research consultants. As far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely the best lead generation firm in the business for economic development organizations. Call them now. They can help you create real prospects. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Next Move Group We Are Jobs podcast focused on creating economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and organizations. I'm Chad Chancellor, the co-founder of Next Move Group, and today we got a real special treat for us, for Next Move Group that is. We've got Jerry Lacoco and Greg Levine with us here today, and Jerry owns SVN Velocity Commercial Real Estate out of Yuma, Arizona, and he's actually our 100th customer since we started business. And and, and, and as we were kind of looking at who our 100th customer might be, we got to 98 and 99. And and Jerry actually had heard one of our podcasts. He heard a podcast we did with Mark Manning up in Murray, Kentucky a few weeks ago. And he was inspired by, by some of, of, of Mark's story and some of Mark's tips in his podcast. So Jerry picked up the phone and called us and we developed a relationship. Now we're doing business. So I can't think of a better 100th customer to really spotlight these podcasts, but also spotlight our mission. So Next Move Group exists to help small to mid-sized companies, organizations, and communities create economic growth. And and, and what we're going to be doing with Jerry and Yuma and SVN Velocity Commercial Real Estate really encompasses all of that. We're going to try to help grow his business through some online marketing efforts that we have. He's interested in growing Yuma, so that'll be part of of our online marketing efforts is to pitch Yuma. And then, of course, if we can reach a company that uh, that locates with Jerry in one of his facilities, then they're going to have economic growth. So this just, uh, Jerry, I just can't tell you, (laughs) you're like our perfect 100th customer, the way this thing all shook out. So so thank you so much for being with us today. And he's got Greg Levine also with us. And Greg works with the Greater Yuma Economic Development Council. So we're just so tickled to have two of y'all with us today and appreciate your business and let's start off jerry with you tell us a little bit about Yuma and why you're so passionate about Yuma. not only your your real estate business but ever communication i've had with you you've said we've got to sell Yuma. we've got to sell Yuma. so tell us really about Yuma and where that passion comes from moved here when i was five years old and and uh, had a lot of really really great people in the community that uh kind of took me in as, as a youngster and helped guided me and and uh, helped me become the man I am today. And all that was from uh, just just hardworking, smart, you know, just good, honest, hardworking people here in Yuma. And it's a testament to the community that we have here. And um, so when my wife and I, we, uh, we decided to move back um, to Yuma when it was time to raise our family. And, and uh, being in a tertiary market, as you know, and as many of your other uh, guests have alluded to is it's not the easiest thing sometimes from an economic development standpoint because you're just not that not that people don't um people just don't realize you're there sometimes you know particularly where we're at you know we're 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 basically situated in the middle of san diego and in phoenix arizona so two you know large secondary markets and so sometimes we get overlooked i think one of the biggest advantages that we have we've discussed is the fact that we have such proximity to California. However, we're not in California. So you can service the Southern California market without having to deal with many of the challenges that, uh, you know, the companies, co- companies experience. So you're really right on the border, aren't you? So for the folks who, who may have never looked at Yuma on a map, I mean, you're on the California, Arizona border, if I remember right. 
Yeah, I don't have the arm I used to when I was 20, but I still think I could hit it with a rock from my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's a whole lot of agricultural uh, food type projects down there. We've represented quite a few ourselves out of that Southern California area. And, and I have looked at it just from a, from a site selection standpoint. And, and where, where Yuma is, uh, there are a whole lot of cost savings if you compare to California. Not only property taxes everybody thinks about, but also electric rates, labor rates, and other ones. I, I figure it's about a 40 to 50% saving on some overhead cost. And, and really, you're right there in that market. Talk about you know, some of the properties, kind of some of the deals that you do so people can understand uh, the business you're in and, and, uh, and what type of properties might be available in Yuma. You know, the, the uh, passion I have being in a, in a smaller market, um, you know, we don't focus specifically on light industrial, heavy industrial, but that's a, probably about 60% of my business. Um, and uh, so we have properties that, uh, for example, we have a, a light industrial park uh, situated in San Luis, Arizona, that is, uh, we have uh, two five acre parcels left now, plus we have development ground available, but we have the, the fully entitled, developed, built, all the utilities stubbed to the pad for $45,000 an acre. And uh, you can't even, you can't even develop ground for that kind of price. And it's in the new port in San Luis. And that's just one example of what, what Greg and I see is just absolute screaming uh, opportunity. And, um, and, and we're starting to see some, some velocity in, in the market, which is, which is encouraging. And so um, I think, Greg, you want to talk about some of the other higher level stuff from an economic development? Yeah, I think our major sell is that you know, the bedrock of any you know, successful economy is going to be your skilled workforce, right? And so when we're meeting with companies, I think our unique sell in Yuma is the fact that we can kind of pull in multiple alternative labor sources that speak to companies that aren't necessarily accustomed to trying to work with Mexico, working with California, and also working with our community. So the fact that we're on the border of four states and two countries, and we're a regional economy of over 1.8 million people, you know, really kind of puts us in a very uh, uh, strategic position to say, even though you're in Yuma, you're gonna be able to collect talent and also supplier benefits from two different countries and another state. And so, so we're leveraging our ag workforce that's seasonal, you know, 30,000 individuals that work here for six months a year for the second largest uh, agricultural region in all the country, and then have to move to Alaska or up to central California to, to find jobs for the other six months. And we're saying, hey, you can, you can capture these individuals here. They have skill sets beyond just work in the fields. They work in the plants. They have technical skills. They have maintenance technician skills. And these folks want to stay in their community. So they're willing to leave now, but they want to stay here. So we're able to leverage that large labor pool source that is underemployed, not unemployed. And then we also have our two, marine, two military bases here that have upwards of 1,400 individuals leaving on a monthly basis. And so we're able to say, you can also capture these individuals for some of your more skilled manufacturing labor in regards to technicians, service mechanics, logisticians, and so forth. And then along with that, you have the trailing spouses as well. So I, I think that really puts us in a position to market multiple labor sources beyond just your traditional labor side. And who are some of your larger employers there? So from a manufacturing side, we have Shaw Carpets in our, in our market. We have Johnson Controls Battery, which now I believe is Clarios. We have Associated Materials, uh, which is uh, all side windows here. Um, we uh, recently um, were able to, to, to locate um, a couple other uh, uh, manufacturing groups such as Piana Non Wovens, which manufactures for Serta and Simmons and so forth. And we have smaller manufacturers as well here. As California, really, as the taxes have gone up and, you know, electricity's gone up and the usage of water has, has become a problem, have you seen more activity out of California? I'm sure you guys see activity from all over, but, but we have a lot of California companies. So I just wonder, have you seen an influx of them looking at you? Those three companies I mentioned, Johnson Controls, Shaw, and Associated Materials, all had California plants prior to locate, relocating to Yuma. And so that's, that's our big sell is that you can see California but not be in California. So when they're manufacturing and they're getting their, their products ready, they're distributing to all their different customer bases in Southern California along with New Mexico and even as far as to Texas as well. Right. So, you know, I'd be able to reach California from Yuma in a one-day truck haul. You can reach half of Southern California in one day and the entire state of California within two days. 
I want to brag on Jerry a little bit. So some of the folks that listen to these podcasts are board members of economic development organizations. And so something Next Move Group's going to be doing for Jerry's real estate company is some online advertising. And the, and the first rough draft that we came up with was really trying to sell his properties. And he came back and said, hey, we got to sell Yuma. I would rather sell Yuma worry with our properties later, which I just found very refreshing <laughs> having dealt with other real estate folks in other places. So, so Jerry, I mean, I, I've seen it firsthand just since we've started doing business, your commitment and passion to sell in Yuma. So give us the Yuma sales pitch as far as you're concerned. Obviously you love it. You're passionate about it. So give us the pitch in your words. You know, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever read Atlas Shrug, but um, there's a, there's a part in the book. It's called a big, big part in the book. It's called Galt's Gulch. And it's basically where, where all the producers, the, the, the people that the means of productions move, move their businesses to. And it's, it's essentially a place of freedom. And I look at, I look at Yuma very, in a very similar means, not to say that we don't have taxing authorities and we don't have, uh, rules and regulations, but but um, Yuma truly Yuma. When I say Yuma, I mean Yuma County is truly business friendly. Um, the the people that we work with on a day to day basis, um, whether it be city administrators or or mayors or you know economic development coordinators. I mean, you can pick up the phone, you can send them text messages, and it's a coordinated effort to uh, get deals done. I think as a community, we understand that that um, that business and government need each other and 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 we have to work together and we have to be better we we can't just be as good as 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 primary secondary markets we have to be two to three times better that's something that greg talks about all the time we do we have we have to we have to win the business we have to really earn it and and uh in yuma we're not afraid to do we're not afraid to do the work and the opportunity it, there's just so much so much opportunity here um, you know, I, I went to I went to undergrad at ASU, so I, I lived in downtown Phoenix when they were just starting their uh, redevelopment of their downtown. That's something that's really neat about Yuma, is we have you, the city of Yuma, is we have a really really cool downtown riverfront uh, from a quality of life standpoint. Um, I think that, that there's just so many of these intangibles that that you can see. Um, you know, and Greg, you know, Greg grew up in, in, in other communities outside of Yuma. And so we, we, we discuss it quite often is, is that Yuma truly is on, on the verge of, of great things. And we're starting to see a lot of, a lot of uh, positive momentum. And so for our manufacturing prospects out there, if, if you call on Jerry, I mean, not only do you get somebody who can show you property, he can actually go out within Yuma and find resources you need to, to help make your business successful. So he's much more focused on a, on a relationship than selling you a piece of property and making you successful. There. Absolutely. You know, I always, I, uh, from a real estate perspective, I, I remember, if you remember in math class, if you got the answer right, but you didn't show the work, you didn't get credit for it. Oh, yeah. yeah, that used to frustrate the devil out of me. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one thing, one thing I've learned in brokerage is you might have the perfect property for 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 a client, but if you don't show your work and you show how you arrive at that answer, and that means showing other other listings, you know, other properties that you may not have listed, you, they need to see and need they need to know and have the confidence that they're seeing all the properties on the market, all the opportunities, and you got to show them the work to arrive at the answer. So now you've already said the word velocity since you've been on this podcast. And I researched a little about you and see where you talk about name and putting that in your company's name. So talk about that word and how that's in your company's name and that philosophy. Velocity means, means growth. It means movement. It means, uh, you know, capital exchanging hands. It means opportunity for people that maybe otherwise wouldn't have opportunity. And I think commercial real estate brokers, um, economic developers uh, play such a vital role in, in creating that velocity um, and helping breaking down barriers to deals. Um, you know, there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be things that, that, that get in the way and, and being uh, proactive, uh, thinking outside the box, coming up with strategies to overcome those challenges and knowing that there's people counting on you uh, to do that. It's a, I, I, you know, Greg and I, we take our, our roles in this community very serious. And Greg, let's shift over to you. I know you guys are doing a lot of cool things that, that aren't just uh, predicated on manufacturing. So talk about yeah. some of the stuff you're doing to grow the youth, my economy and other areas. 
Yeah, probably what's not known about our area is the fact that we have a, a large aerospace and defense um, industry base here. You know, between the Yuma Proving Grounds, which is the largest military testing facility in all the United States, along with our Marine Corps Air Station, which is the largest air station within the Marine Corps uh, inst uh, inst institution, you know, that allows for us to focus on more than just manufacturing and food processing. You know, we're actually right now going to be uh, um, designated as the only spaceport in Arizona. That's hopefully going to be signed by the governor in January. And at that point in time, we're going to have the ability to launch uh, small satellites and rockets from Yuma as a testing site. And then with that, hopefully be a, a research and development facility standpoint so that companies from around the world can come here and do testing on that scale. And so we're able to capitalize on the fact that we have a large unrestricted airspace. We have the unencumbrance of of surrounding development that allows for a lot of different testing to occur. And the fact that we already have a large you know, workforce over 3,000 technicians and engineers that are doing the work here in our backyard right now. So, so companies looking to get into spaceport travel can partner with our proving grounds, do some work up there at the military secure facility, and they can come down and work on a private um, uh, land site to do the additional, the final launching and so forth. So that's the spaceport side. And then, and then food processing is another area we're really working on and back office space as well. You know, when you're talking about right now, we have all state in our area, we have Convey, ACT, who uh, does work for at and You know, we have a large segment of individuals who can work in the call center realm. And what we found is the turnover rate in our community is less than 10% in call centers, which is kind of unheard of. Oh yeah, usually it's like 80%. So you're less <laughs> than 10%. Yes, yes, and we get those numbers from our from our call center folks, you know, and again, that goes back to when we talk about the underemployed segment of our community, along with our partnership with Mexico, you know, we have thousands of people who can cross the border every day legally through either visas or dual residency and work in our community. But what that does, too, is that they can have a great quality of life without having to make, you know, top dollar for that job. And so that keeps wages here stabilized. So, you know, we can, we can offer an opportunity that you don't have to worry about 10 years from now, things getting so out of control that now you're, you're, all your costs have gone up double. Right. And of course, most call centers like bilingual speakers. And so obviously you have a, you have a whole lot. How big is Yuma? Would say the city and then, a, and then the county or what would you consider your region population? So our regional area is 250,000, but then our captive market is over 1.8 million. And that includes Mexico. And, and, and if you looked at my card, one side says Greater Yuma Economic Development, and the other side says Four Front Terrace. You know, and that, so we include our partners. We're interconnected with San Luis Rio, Colorado. We're interconnected with uh, Mexicali, Mexico, and we're interconnected with our partners in Imperial Valley, California. So, you know, when, when we're talking about an area, we're talking about a real region, an international region. Right. right. <laughs> so what was your background before you, you came to Yuma? Oh, I'm a life for economic developer. I came right out of college and, and fell right into my job. And so I'm a big city boy from New York City, you know, came out here, you know, for love. And then uh, decided after that didn't work out. I stayed in love with the community. You know? <laughs> it was a love, but a different, the one that won't leave you. The one that's exactly. it's almost like an addiction, you know. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad either, you know. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's, that's a charm of Yuma. You know, you come out here, I came out here with a three-year plan to get my feet underneath me and then go with some big community, bigger community. And what I found was that this was virgin territory with a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't gotten there as fast as we'd like to, but I think we're starting to finally see the fruits of our labor. And that's, that's exciting. You know, I try not to be a sleazy salesman with, with this kind of stuff, but I genuinely believe you see folks who are looking for the American dream. I really think Yuma embodies that in so many ways from a cultural standpoint because we're 70 percent latino you know officially probably more so 80 percent and that you know and for us those individuals represent a, a a workforce base that's dedicated disciplined and grateful for their opportunity to to you know and, you know, to bring honor to their family name and to their community so it's, it's a little different here from some a lot of other places and talk about some of the infrastructure i know you're on the interstate there i know one of jerry's buildings i've already looked at it's right beside the airport so talk a little bit about rail transportation uh, interstate and so forth yeah thank you for teaming me up on that yeah so we have interstate 8 that runs right through yuma that interconnects to, to san diego we have highway 95 that that's an offshoot of interstate 8 that goes right to las vegas and the reno area um, along with that union pacific has this uh, high velocity sunset route runs from Southern California through Yuma, but we also have translo facilities that can take off of that, that line for manifest or origin cars. Uh, we have the new commercial port of entry, Jerry already talked about, that he's got a Port Authority pro uh, property down there. That's about 160 acres, and that commercial port is less than five years old, state of the art, 
eight lanes, all of the you know, you know, um, expedited screening that, that can get your truckloads across to and from north and south, you know, and then with, with that as well, you can actually be able to interconnect to uh, California, as I mentioned before, within a one, one day truck turn to over 20 million people. So from an infrastructural standpoint, you know, we, we can get goods in and out of our community from both sides of the border very quickly. And do you have commercial flights there out of Yuma? We do. Yeah. We right now we are flying to Phoenix and we're flying to Dallas. Okay. So you can get and we're working on it. Yeah, we're working on a third leg that is almost at the home stretch and, and that'll be exciting to get folks to the northwest as well. All right, great. You can probably get to Dallas quicker than folks from Fort Worth can get to the Dallas airport. If you <laughs> and, uh, well, I'd like to ask both of you, uh, you know, part of, part of our listening base are economic developers. So I like to make a little of this a, a training segment. So Jerry, being in the real estate business, you obviously know how to close a deal. What would be your advice to economic developers uh, who may be listing, who have prospects and maybe they hadn't had that success closing a deal? What, what do you think is the key to being able to, to close a deal? Oh, you know, it's funny. I love, I love that question. We were, Greg and I were talking about this yesterday and, and um, you know, if you're under a request for proposal and one of the things I've learned in this business is that what, what a client typically says in the beginning rarely is what they end up going with at the end. It always changes, always changes. So no matter what the, the, uh, the request might say in the beginning, if you have a property that that is 60% qualified or whatever, do your best to put a proposal together to pitch it. One, because you, you got to make the effort. And two, think about how much money people spend to get in front of these of these site selectors, right? And so you're getting a free opportunity to put a package in front of these site selectors. You know, if you spend if you spend money flying to you know to Dallas to New York, whatever at these conventions, you're spent you're spending several thousand dollars to maybe be able to put that in front of them. And, and will you get their attention? Probably not, but you've got this opportunity. So I think sometimes it's just, it's just, you, you know, you get, you might get frustrated with, with, with the, the uh, request for proposal and maybe you might feel like your the property won't fit, but you just look at the opportunity that you do have and, and maximize it and think that, Hey, you know, maybe if it doesn't work for this site, this, the site selection group is now going to know, because they're going to have to study this package. They're going to know this piece. And it might be the next company that comes up that goes and buys that deal. So I, 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 I could not agree with Jerry Moore. Being on the site selection side, uh, our clients are constantly changing the mind on what they need, <laughs> you know, even with us and we're, and we're talking to them. So, I mean, it's nothing for somebody to get a new contract and now the building's got to be bigger. Or maybe they lose a contract. It needs to be smaller. Maybe they get into a new line of business, got to have different ceiling heights or equipment. And, and we actually keep track of communities who respond aggressively. And I don't mean with necessarily a number, but just in their answer. You can read an answer and tell if someone's aggressive or not just by the words they choose. And so we actually keep a list of those, and then we end up taking more projects back to them, even, even if they didn't have what we needed. So I think that's great advice. Greg, would you have any, any advice along that question? Well, you know, I would say, well, on your last podcast, you had a gentleman who spoke about 80-20 rule, and we have an 80-20 rule ourselves. You know, we spend 80% of our money trying to attract companies to Yuma, but 80% of our time working with our local stakeholders. And so we have found that approach has been so successful for us in building a uh, champion, champion group that when we bring in new companies, our manufacturers are sitting in front of them, and they're touting Yuma just as much as, and better than we would. And, and, and it's because we built that relationship locally that they know that they're still being taken care of. We didn't just locate them and forget about them. And, and so they know that the entire community is rallying behind them. So you build that goodwill and that, and that trust from them. And they, again, become your best salespeople. And along with that is collaboration. You know, I know that's a very uh, anecdotal word or, or very uh, general, but, you know, we are interconnected at every level from our college that's inter interconnected to our workforce groups and that's interconnected to our K through 12 system. And so we're all sitting around the table and that takes time and many years and trust as well to get everyone to understand that we all have a role and we're all can benefit if we work together as opposed to us separately because, you know, we're kind of on an island out here. And so we have to be interconnected at every level. And so I would, I would highly recommend to any economic developers that, you know, if, if you can, um, you know, build the gain, the trust and loyalty of your, of your local industry, and then combine that with the collaborative collaboration between your public sector and your private side, that it's been fairly successful for us. We know that if we can get a company into the market, 
our sales team is so wide and so um, diverse that we have a 90% conversion rate. The tough part is just getting folks to, to fly out to Yuma. <laughs> Man, I wish I had a 90% conversion. I thought I was decent. I don't have a 90% conversion rate. As we, as we wrap up, I want you to give these guys your website so they can find contact information if anyone has interest. And if, if there's anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to brag about Yuma or get out there to the public, uh, feel free to use this as your opportunity as you, as you give the folks your website and contact information. Yeah, so uh, again, Chad, I, I appreciate it, man. Um, our website is pretty simple, yumacre.com. And I would just say, you know, again, uh, for those, uh, those fans of the book Atlas Shrugged, you know, uh, just think of, uh, think of Yuma as a, as a land of opportunity, very much like Galt's Gulch, and, uh, and, and give it a look. You know, there's, there's uh, so many people, uh, you know, that I went to, like I said, I went to undergrad at ASU, and a lot of people's their, their impression of Yuma was, is, you know, there's a, there's a McDonald's on the way to San Diego. Yeah. I stopped, you know, I know Yuma, there's that McDonald's right there, you know, and there's really truly is so much more. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, uh, having, having kind of gone to school in a, in, in Phoenix and lived in Tempe and in, in downtown Phoenix. And, uh, it's almost like being, uh, tra kind of traveling back in time and being able to forecast what's going to happen. You can see it. You can see many of the, of the uh, pieces of the puzzle that are starting to come together in Yuma, and it, it, it's going to be an exciting ride. There's a ton of opportunity here. Yeah. Awesome. Greg, give us your contact information for the website, and then any, any final comments you might want to make. Thank you for your time, Chad. You do great work. Uh, so it's www.greateryuma.org. Uh, and kind of my last final parting words would be that, you know, our community is, a, is in a place right now where – we want to see the right companies come to our area and support them in every way we can. And so what I can guarantee is any individual who's looking at our region uh, is that we will make sure that if it doesn't work in our, in our backyard, that we'll make sure we're both directing to where it should be. You know, we, want to, we want to do this smartly and responsibly. And so we, we're looking out for the company first and foremost, because if we don't, it's not good for the community and it's not good for the company. So you know, I, would, I would highly uh, recommend anyone who's looking to service the uh, West Coast market and, and get to all the major final markets within a uh, expedited time frame to take a look at Yuma region uh, and, and just you know consider us a extension of their site selection team in so many different facets. And also we'll bring our partners to the table who will as well be part of it. Well, thanks so much, guys. Greg and Jerry, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for being part of our show and, and not only sharing your experiences and expertise with us, but, but telling folks about Yuma. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for the time. A special thank you to Younger Associates for recording, editing, and publishing this podcast for us. I encourage you to visit their website at younger-associates.com.